So the next thing we're going to look at is uh, determining average atomic, um, atomic weights, atomic mass. Um, atomic and molecular masses can be measured using something called a mass spectrometer, and there's a video that kind of explains in much more detail um, you know, how this particular instrument works. But the general idea is you put your sample in over here, uh, you ionize it, and then it splits everything up based on what kind of uh, isotopes you have. So uh, if I had a sample of chlorine, chlorine has two, um, two isotopes that are readily abundant. So I have chlorine 37 and chlorine 35, and they're going to travel at, a, at a, a different speed. They're going to come out at a different time. We're going to be able to detect that and separate the, um, you know, how much of each type of ion you have based on its mass. And that's not really a big difference in mass. So this is a pretty incredible uh, type of instrument. Um, so you, you can figure out, you know, in a given sample, what is, what is the average, the average mass of that sample. Uh, this, this technique, mass spectrometry, is used in the real world all the time. It's used in lots of different labs. You may have seen it in, um, oh, in like one of the CSI shows where they do like gas chr uh, chromatography and then at the end they run it through a, a mass spectrometer and that's called a GCMS. Um, so listen out for that next time. Uh, my favorite example of uh, where I've seen uh, a mass spectrometer used was to catch elephant poachers. And so this was kind of neat. Um, so you probably are familiar with elephant poaching, which is sad. Um, but so, so they, they capture these elephants, they kill them, they take their ivory tusks. And then what happens is how do they catch poachers once they do that? So you confiscate some of the, some of the ivory and then you can take a little bit of it and you can test it. You, you run it through a, uh, a mass spectrometer and you separate out all the isotopes. So you can figure out what, you know, what, how, what's the isotopic ratio of carbon versus, and, and nitrogen and strontium. And it turns out that in the test, um, that, that isotopic ratio is going to be different depending on what the elephant eats. So if the elephant eats, uh, it lives in the jungle and eats leaves from the tree, it has a different, you know, signature isotopic ratio than if it eats grass. Because, and it's just that has to do with the photosynthetic pathways that grass undergoes something slightly different than than trees, um, and so you, you, they absorb a different uh, isotopic ratio. Of these things, and you can you can actually measure that. And so what they were able to do is really narrow down where the elephants that were that were being uh, were being poached where they lived by like a hundred miles or so, and so they could target their area and and and, ca um, and capture the the poachers and catch them that way, which was kind of neat. All right, that's our real world example of, of something here. Um, so what are we going to use it for? We're going to look at the average mass. So you can calculate, the average mass is calculated from the isotopes of elements weighted by their relative abundance. Um, and so you need to, to weight your, your sample uh, depending on you know how many of each type of uh, isotope you have. So just forget about isotopes for a second. Just think about um, you know, ping pong balls and, and, and bowling balls. So suppose I had this, uh, I had this, you know, all these balls here and I want to figure out what the average mass of that sample is. A ping pong ball weighs a lot different than a, a bowling ball. So I can't just take, uh, um, say, okay, well, a bowling ball is 10 pounds and a ping pong ball is, you know, an ounce or whatever, and add them together and divide by two and say, okay, that's what my average sample is. Because it depends on how many bowling balls I have versus how many ping pong balls I have. If I have 99 bowling balls in one ping pong ball, I'm going to have a different average mass than if I had 99 ping pong balls in one bowling ball. So you have to weight it depending on you know, how much each, each thing uh, weighs and uh, how abundant it is. How many of each type do I have? Uh, and so that's what we're going to do down here. We're going to take... Um, uh, well, first, we're going to be using atomic mass units. Atomic mass units are just saying that they're in exactly 12 atomic mass units, um, exactly 12 atomic mass units in one atom of carbon-12. So um, when you're talking about atoms, it doesn't really make sense to talk about it on a gram scale because uh, the, an atom is, is very, 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 very small. Um, so you make up your own unit called atomic mass unit, you base it off of carbon. Uh, carbon, uh, you have um, six protons, six neutrons, and so it has an atomic mass of, uh, of 12 if you're dealing with you know, isotopically pure carbon 12. Um, so we're going to be dealing with atomic mass units instead of uh, the grams or something like that, because we're only talking about one atom at a time there. So um, also, when we're finding the average mass, again, this is, what you, this is what you find in the periodic table. So when you go back to the periodic table and we look at the numbers here on the bottom, those are your average atomic masses. So that takes into consideration um, the percent abundance of each type of isotope. 
So here we have naturally occurring chlorine is set like about 75.78%, chlorine 35, and this is the atomic mass of chlorine 35, and then 20, the rest of it, 24.22%, is chlorine 37, uh, which has an atomic mass of 36.966. So right away, you can can you guess? Can you kind of figure out, you know, is this going to look more like when I take the average mass? Do you think it'll be more like carbon 35 or carbon 37? You would expect the average mass to be closer to carbon 35 because 75% of it looks like carbon or chlorine 35. Did I say carbon? Looks like chlorine 35, and only 24.22% looks like chlorine 37. So when you calculate the average mass, you would expect it to look closer to um, the element that you, the atom that you have, the isotope that you have uh, more of. All right. So how do we calculate all this stuff? How do we find our average mass? Now these problems are nice because you can always check your answer. You should get whatever's in the periodic table as your average mass. Um, so how do we figure that out? So we have 75.78%. Uh, so to get rid of that percent sign, just divide that by 100. That is, you know, your your percent abundance, and then multiply it by the mass. So the mass is 34.969. And then you want to add the, the other part. So the rest of it is uh, 24.22 over 100. So you get rid of the percent sign. And then multiply that by the mass of this one. So 36.966. If you had a third one, then you just add the third. So whatever that percentage over 100 times the mass. Um, notice that when you add... 75, you know, when you add these two percents, they have to equal 100. So if you had a third one, I think the homework has a third one, um, they would have to add up to, to be 100%. So when you work all this out, you should get about 35.45. 35.45. And our units are atomic mass units. So don't forget to put your units down as well. That's a lot different than 35.45 grams. Um, so make sure you put your units.